Hello my friends, it's Nina. Welcome back. Today I am back with a bullet journaling video. It is now September. Three-fourths of the year has passed. But I also know it's back to school season for a lot of you. I am no longer in school. I graduated in 2019. It feels like five years ago, but it was only last year and a few months ago. But I still use a bullet journal in my life. I know that a lot of you also use a bullet journal or a planner or some kind of technique system, or maybe you don't. Today, I wanted to show you my very, 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 very simple bullet journal setup. It has updated a little bit and it also became even more simple than last time, if that's even possible. I am excited to show you my setup for September and I really wanted to focus on a layout that would work for anyone. Even if you just started bullet journaling yesterday, even if you've done bullet journaling for years, I myself am quite a simple person. Sometimes I'll skip months of bullet journaling. Sometimes I won't even fill it out even though I spent like two hours working on the setup. But personally taking the time to bullet journal just helps slow down time. It makes me feel better. I like listening to music or watching YouTube videos while I set up my bullet journal. It's just a great time. In college, I use the this quite a lot probably every single day because it was a busy time I had many assignments to keep track of I had future exams certain deadlines I had to keep track of so I really just needed a bullet journal planners also work to-do lists work a scrap piece of paper also works but today we are focusing on bullet journaling a bullet journal really just helps me keep my life together so let's get our lives together together. So I'm going to start with the materials that I use for bullet journaling. So this is the bullet journal that I use. It is the Leuchtturm 1917 dotted notebook. This is probably one of the more popular brands for bullet journals. Paper-wise, it does ghost a little bit. You can kind of see what you wrote behind it. I just used this brand for a couple years. I might try out different ones in the future. It just gets the job done. And then for markers, I use the Zebra Mild Liners. They come in a lot of colors, but this month I focused on a green, brown, gray, blue palette. It's very earthy. You can, of course, just go with any colors you like. And then for pens, I only use a black and red pen. I only really need it to write and cross things out. For my black pen, I've been trying out the Pilot G205 pen. This is a gel rollerball pen. I've heard a lot more about Pilot G2 recently. And personally for me, I think Pilot G2 pens are more accessible and widely available. I was trying to find Muji pens online because I don't have a Muji store around me, but I wasn't able to find one, so I did want to try out the G2. It's honestly done a good job, especially for writing. For drawing long lines, it does kind of skip a little bit. Maybe that's the paper or the pen, but for writing, this pen has done the job. I did wonder if I wanted the 038 or the 05. Honestly, with the Muji, I have 038 pens, but sometimes the tip is a little scratchy, so that's why this time I went with an 05, and I think that was a good choice. The tip is obviously a little bit bigger, but it's more comfortable, I think, for me. It's not as scratchy, especially if I want to write bigger, but for my red pen, I still have a Muji pen. Muji pens also do the job. Those are just the materials that I use. You can also use a ruler, some whiteout, whatever else you need. Honestly, I used to use a ruler, but I don't have patience anymore, so I just like to freehand everything. Does it get messy? Yes, it does. But honestly, the imperfect lines just give it some character. It gives me some freedom. If I use a ruler and I make one tiny mistake, it's very noticeable. But if all your lines are imperfect, then no one can tell when you make a mistake because it all looks like a mistake. So those are the main supplies that I use. I might throw in some washi tape or some stickers, but honestly most of the time I just go for these pens and markers But for my setup lately, I just like to go very uniform very simple kind of on the minimal side But without further ado, I am going to now show you the actual setup So ignoring my very dry skin because of all the hand washing I've been doing during these times We're starting out with the month setup for my header I went with a simple cursive title so that it looks minimal and clean I used to do bold capital letters, but I feel like the cursive looks more gentle and fitting for me. I use a marker first, then I go in with a pen. For September, I went with a plant motif to signify growth. Back when I was in school, August and September always reminded me of a new school year where I live, so it's kind of like a time to grow. It also just goes well with the green. And I like to draw something on this line to mimic washi tape. Next, for the actual month, I'm making these little 6x1 boxes for the days of the week. Then I'm making 6x6 boxes for each day of the month. There are usually 5 weeks in a month, so I put in 5 rows. If there are 6 weeks, I'll just cut the last few boxes 
months in half to add the last few days. The month setup basically just helps you visualize your month. It'll be there for you whenever you need to add something as the month goes. And on the side with a different color, I'm adding sections for goals, future stuff, and extra notes. Then I'm just adding these marks to write in the days of the month. I use a gray color for our days from the months before and after, then just another color for the rest of the days. And that is our simple month. Here I am filling it out. I'm just writing in the most important, crucial stuff. You can write down future exams, assignments due, other deadlines if you're not in school, birthdays, events, things like that. Whatever you need to remember, write out little goals if you want, things for the next month, anything really. Next, we are moving on to the habit tracker. I used to not use a habit tracker, but I tried it out for a year or so and it's just a nice little thing to have for me. It kind of gives me something to do. Most of the time, I don't end up filling it that well or I just completely forget to fill it out, but that's okay. It's just there for me if I want to see how the month went. And on the other page, I made a quick brain dump, which I'll get into later. Here, I'm making headers and then I make seven by five grids to represent the month. I technically track nine things. I track YouTube uploads, Instagram, TikTok, vitamins, exercise, walking my dogs, watering my plants, sleeping before midnight, and studying Korean. So I'm not tracking to see if I do everything every single day, but I just like to see what the month looked like. Most of the time, it looks blank because I forget to fill it out, but making the spread is calming to me. <laughs> just look at all these lines. It's kind of satisfying. So now we are back to the brain dump. To help me enjoy bullet journaling and not feel like I'm running out of space, I like to leave myself blank pages for me to write down whatever I want. At the bottom of this page, I'm adding a cute little drawing just to make the page come together. Again, I start with marker, then I use pen. It kind of has like a watercolor effect going on. Now you can use the brain dump to literally dump out all your thoughts and ideas from your brain. So simple and neat. And here I am using my habit tracker. Obviously, September hasn't happened yet, but usually I upload on Sundays, except this time because I uploaded on a Monday, but I'm just demonstrating how I fill this out. I use a different color marker and I just make a little dot. And for the brain dump, just throw in whatever you want. Maybe you want to plan a quick grocery list, or for me, I usually like to plan out video ideas, especially if they randomly come to mind. Or heck, even use this page to just doodle. You're free to do whatever you want. And speaking of blank pages, I'm leaving two more pages for my reflections, which is kind of like a diary. I usually added this at the end of the month setup, but this time I just added it here. This is where I get to write proper thoughts and just a reflection of a certain day. Sometimes I just want to write my feelings out, so this is an appropriate space for that. Literally, I might just write two to three sentences about the day. It doesn't have to be a whole paragraph, so that's why I only save two pages. You can leave more if you want, but I don't write in my reflections every single day. It's more like I just have days where I want to write about my day. It's a nice thing to have, especially if you had a stressful day and you just want to let things out. Or if you had a good day, you can write something nice for yourself too. It's all up to you. I just like seeing these thoughts weeks and months later. And finally, we have the week setup. I like to test out different setups for the week depending on how busy or not busy I am. I adapted the style for these busier times when you could be having lots of assignments or lots of tasks you need to write down. We're going with this quadrant style. I've done this in some of my recent videos because I like all this vertical space to list out tasks and things. I'm simply writing out the days starting with Monday, and then I am writing the hours of 7 a.m. all the way to midnight, and this is my little schedule. Here, you can actually plan out the times of your tasks, your classes, other things. I think it'll be helpful to have a place to write a bullet point list of things, and then on the side, you can actually time those things out. Also, this is when I realized I got the numbers wrong because I usually go from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. I mean, this still works, but the rest of my schedules had 1 p.m., so I'm just going to fix that. An important thing to remember is that we all make mistakes, especially when we're creating. Not everything goes perfectly, and that's okay. Try not to be hard on yourself when you make a mistake. You'll eventually find a way around it, just as you have for all these years that you lived. And now we're just filling out the rest of the week, and I also made another mistake, except this mistake got a little weirder. I couldn't figure out what went wrong, but then I realized, so I'm just fixing it again. But yes, the week does go past two pages. This just allows for a lot of room and freedom to write things down, cross things out, change mistakes in your schedule, etc, etc. For the schedule, I'm making these brackets to indicate the time, and inside, I'm writing what is going on during that time. You can write down your Zoom calls, your breaks, appointments, things like that, and you get to visually see it all. I like the use of different colors as well. And of course, you can jot down stuff for the future and extra notes you have through the week. But that is pretty much it for the month setup. Here is a look at the clean setup before I showed you how I fill it out, but I love how simple and clean it is. Everyone's style is different, but I just wanted to show what I do in case someone needs some inspiration. All you have to do now is add weeks as they go by and then it'll be the next month. Goodbye from voiceover Nina, back to you.
Lena. And that is the end of my bullet journal setup. It is very simple, but it's the way that I like it. I also try to focus on a layout that anyone can do, yet it would also be helpful to you as well. I personally hope that bullet journaling is a fun time for you, not a stressful time. I know that people can be overwhelmed by your bullet journal. I was like that when I was in high school. I tried keeping up with my bullet journal, but I made it way too complicated for myself. So of course I wouldn't keep up with it, but I've been using a bullet journal for many years now. It has helped a lot. It doesn't just help organize wise but it also helps to calm me down slow down time and just give me something nice to do I really do enjoy bullet journaling it's a creative time for me it takes me 30 minutes to an hour maybe two hours if I'm adding some stuff and during that time you're really just creating something nice for yourself so bullet journaling or planners or some kind of schedule really does help keep me together I also hope that it helps you that you enjoy it that it's a good time for you as well no method is right or wrong do whatever you like add more things to it do something differently take stuff out to put stuff in. It's really up to you. This is just what I do. If anyone else finds this useful, that's great. But I hope you enjoyed our time together bullet journaling. I also do hope that you're hanging in there and taking care of yourself, taking care of your health, staying hydrated. Remember to rest, do something nice for yourself, take breaks, do stuff that makes you happy, things like that. I hope you enjoy your school year. And if you're not in school, I hope you enjoy whatever it is you're doing. You're doing great. I believe in you. This day will pass and we will find ourselves in another one. But that is it for me. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye, my friends.